Hello everybody, I am Shepherd. Welcome back to Let's Play Penumbra Overture. Okay. Yeah, this is... This bit's a bit of a bastard. Ah. Okay, so boom. Bang. The middle one's free. Okay, I know where to go next, and then I'm gonna run for it. Right. Okay. There we go. Done. What? Door is jammed. Well then, we gotta go smacking some vents. Ah, there we go. Now, okay, we don't go that way. We go this way. Goddamn vents! Da 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 da. Hmm. Where is this that we are going? I am a bit bewildered. Ah, okay, I know where I am now. This really does not look safe. What? This wall, it's new. The cement's almost wet. It kind of been put up more than a week ago. What the hell? Right then, we gotta go and make this thing fly, don't we? What? Aha. Uh -huh. Never mind. Current tracks for transporting ore. As far as I know, these same set up each day. I'd say if I push this back far enough and did a good old ram, it'd probably work. But I'm not sure. I remember. That we have to put this through the wall. I know that much, so maybe we gotta just. Uh, it's gonna be closed up. These chains are holding the cart in place. Wire cutters! Of course! And. Bye! Okay, that thing's gone a bit off track, but it got there. It got there. Yes, it's all coming back now. That's one of the worms. Hundreds of newspaper clippings, all to do with biomedical sciences, local wildlife, and field studies. Not a thing in the first aid. There's a mess of statistics and crude drawings on this chalkboard. They all relate to a large species of... What? Annelid. Nothing. Ah, an old newspaper. Notes. Okay. 
Uh, well, pretty well battered. Very little is still readable. Ah, but there's a projector here. If we put the newspaper on the projector. No. It's badly faded, but it looks like a close up view of some kind of species. The big ass worms, maybe? Okay, what's the newspaper for? A cohort, a man with no name. It is he who opens this gateway to hell. A grin on his face, he is terrible indeed. He watches the men whine and turn. Still father looks on something vital in his hand. I felt something that time that I didn't feel before. But I'm sure it's always been there. It's as if a small part of me is still trapped inside the artifact. Yes, your memory. It is locked from the other side. Poking the key out isn't going to achieve anything. I need a way to... Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, yeah. There we go, the old key in the newspaper trick. There we go. Yeah. No, you 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 pull the newspaper. Ah, for fuck's sake. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. The old newspaper paper and the key trick. All this trick in the book. From the debris, I'd say something huge broke into the room not too long ago. There's blood and slime everywhere. Yep, I can definitely see that. Ugh. Ugh. Slugs. Ah. It's an artificial habitat. Those things look long dead. I think I know how they felt not being able to get out. Well, I don't know whether you know how they felt, but... Trust me, man. <coughs> There's something about this room. Remember. Professor. These are the biomedical journals of Dr. J. Pierre Peters. Peters. MSD, PhD, completed between the dates of the 30th of March 1969 and the 1st of January 1972 at the Northwest Research Station within the Northwestern Iron Mine with the permission of Delta Mining Corp. Replication of selected extracts left at the disposal of the mine foreman. Subject of study, genus Ryakophilia. Commonly, Grey rock worm. Aim to investigate the abnormal presence of the caddis in the Greenland rock. Method. Collection of samples. If indeed they can be identified correctly, standard series of testing, observation and dissection. Personal note. Upon arrival at the mining facility, I was immediately stunned by the sheer volume of fauna that finds a way of life down here, despite the conditions. In general, one would assume that the species were, whose natural habitat has passed a certain depth would find the intrusion of human human activity too great a threat to remain in place. However, almost the exact opposite seems to be the case in this instance. It is curious that certain areas of the mine appears to be entirely without life of any kind, and yet other deeper areas are teeming and were the situation permitting. I would embrace the opportunity to commit further time to the study of these organisms. However, the purpose of my stay here shall continue to be the genus Ryacophilia. Me. Ah, finally some writing paper. Look at me! Just using up the pages to scroll down whatever comes into my head. Ha! <laughs> what is this stuff anyway? Some kind of research paper? No matter. It's paper all the same. I can finally record what's been happening down here for, I suppose, a year now? Must be near the end of 2001 by now. Huh. I wonder when, when Christmas was. No matter. Too tired to write now. 
We'll rest a little first. Professor. Samples collected. The collection process has been far easier than I anticipated. The setup of the artificial environment for a rock worm went without a hint without a hitch, and the specimens themselves are so abundant as to make keeping them out far more challenging than containing them. They are all of healthy size, perhaps even beyond recorded, recorded size, and I can only assume that this is due to some lack of natural predators down here. Specimens are as following. Three adults in artificial habitat, two larva infants dead. Me. I've been down here two days now, it was meaning to record events every day, but was too busy securing the area. I've used some supplies from the old mining system to wall myself in here. It seems as safe a place as any, so those things should at least stay put for a while. To that end, it seems I had a pretty lucky stumbling here. All this old research is about something similar to what's been haunting me ever since I escaped the shelter four days ago. Don't get me wrong, after what, after what they did to me back there. I'd rather be facing anything else, and after almost a year of fighting for our lives, we didn't really stand a chance anyway. I don't know how many are left inside. But this is good. These notes might have some way to fight the things. The rockworms that followed me here, I don't know how they knew I was coming or how they managed to follow me in the dark. But maybe I can wa work that out now. I've found some old newspaper clippings. I guess they're referring to this mine. I had no idea it was so old. So big. I can see now why they built that facility here in the first place. A lot of history buried down here. It worries me though. We'd, be re we'd been resting all our hopes of rescue on one of the scientists who escaped right near the start of it all. He got out almost as the chaos began so we figured he might have made it out and brought help but Maybe me and him are due the same fate. I must record what's been going on, give the world the answers it needs so it doesn't fall prey to what's been released down here. But first I need to worry about myself, find a way out of here and work out how to kill these worm things. Professor Observations The creatures are indeed larger than has previously been recorded. Juveniles seem to still be growing far beyond their natural limits, although the adults have now expired. I will watch with interest to see what lifespan is of this particular subspecies. The worms appear to have three senses, as would be validated by previous research. Taste, smell, and an extremely sense of, sense of touch, which allows them to detect vibrations in the rock in the same way that the human eye senses beams of light and processes them into spatial images. Their natural prey is insects, smaller than themselves, and heaven help those insects because the worm is a vicious and efficient killer. Me. He's wrong. They have no sense of smell. Today I attempted to distract them with a concoction I found lying around, but to no avail. However, it's, it does seem that they detect movement via vibrations, which would explain how they can see in the dark. Damn, there are a most no way to escape them down here. I mean, I'm on their territory now. Lifespan is three days and counting. I can hear them outside the wall. As an extra precaution, I've locked myself in a smaller study area connected to the main lab room. If they get through the wall, I doubt this door will stop them, but it's better than nothing. Barely. Professor Conclusions The subspecies of genus Ryacophila is highly adapted to its environment. If released above the surface, it seems likely that it would quickly destroy the existing rockworm population, and soon after that the population will grow to a size far outstripping its own food supplies. Giving its increase in size and lifespan already due to unknown conditions, I would hypothesize that the worm, if left in such conditions for a reasonable period of time, perhaps three to four thousand years, could grow up to a further three inches, making it a total of almost one foot long. However, should these conditions change or indeed magnify, physical evaluation could occur far more rapidly. Me. It's the fifth day today and I swear they have begun to surround my location. I can't tell whether or not they have breached the wall I built, but I'm certain they've entered whatever areas surrounding this room. The future looks increasingly bleak. I intend to record here the events of the past year and hope that perhaps what occurred could be contained or driven away. Now I realize I could write all I wanted, no one would ever make it down here to read it. So why write this now? Good question. I have no answer. All I do know is I'd rather take my own life than die at the jaws of those hideous monsters. I've tied a noose 
Those monsters may feed on my corpse, but they won't take my life. Well, I haven't seen any news. So. Um, while you hunt for those delicate, uh, melt in your mouth, mousy morsels, there are places you should not go for, for fear of death. The Reaper lives here, just like you and I. And just like you and I, he must ingest the living flesh of those less fortunate than him. There is a small place that I do not want you to visit, even on your holidays, because it is dark and evil place that I've been. When the darkness has overwhelmed my small decaying mind, some bad things have flowed from my mind and through my pen. The brilliant blue ink itself seemed to turn to blood into my grace. And by the way, should you turn peckish, red is at its finest sautéed with a little engine oil. <laughs> Okay. There we go. Yes. Ah, with the UV light, there's some text showing up on the blank piece of paper. I don't read storage password 1371. I doubt I'd have to write it, but yeah, 1371. That's that's. Excellent! Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? I have a feeling that uh, your man that was down here was possibly red, I don't know. No, probably not, actually. But, uh... I think red has definitely been down here at some point. Right! Oh! That's not that much. Copenhagen Post, Friday, 25th December 1970s. Superstition extinct. Death mine still breathing? A worker at the Northwestern Iron Mine Greenland is missing, presumed dead as of midday last night. Midnight last night. Locals fear foul play. Mining now forms the largest single industry in Greenland. At 16 years old, a Northwestern Iron Mine is a relatively new part of a larger complex, which also includes a lead operation and is built on the site of an older mine, later converted into a military bunker and finally closed in 1952. The Iron Mine retains its excellent work record in spite of the recent disappearance of a as yet unnamed worker. We've discovered that the man in question was a young laborer brought in from mainland Europe, possibly Denmark, and authorities on both sides of the strait are currently attempting to contact any family he may have left behind. The man disappeared ten days ago and the mine foreman has now exercised his power to declare him presumed dead. This decision, we are told, was not taken lightly. A full search of the mining operation was commissioned to no avail. Without the appropriate equipment or transport, the man could not have survived on the surface. Although superstition in Greenland has seen a decrease in popularity over the past years, some local inhabitants still claim that the land itself is cursed. This very paper ran a report almost 40 years ago to the day discussing high suicide figures for the area, but finding at the time, findings at the time were considered to be inconclusive. Lars Jensen. Yeah. This place is pretty fucked up. Did I search in here? I did. Right. I'm going to save and I'm going to leave it here for this part. And uh, in the next part, we will continue on. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and have fun.